So I want to talk a little bit about the different types of collars to use with our dog uh, during training. One of the most common basic regular collars that I would recommend would be just a regular uh, belt buckle like collar like this one here. The reason I like these as opposed to per se some of the collars that have the plastic clips especially uh, is that if we have a dog who is particularly strong, excited, pulls whatever, with the plastic buckle collars, there's a higher chance that they're going to be able to break that, that the plastic will become brittle. Uh, and so then we have an off-leash dog in a situation that we may not need. So these are the best collars, in my opinion, some of the best to have. Uh, Gypsy has a rolled collar. There's also the regular just flat double nylon collars. Those are great, either or. Um, and then as far as fitting and placement goes for the collar. So I know a lot of people who like to have the collars on pretty loose with a lot of room while they're at home because it's something that the dog wears on a daily basis. So I understand that. However, a lot of times when we're working with a dog who is having issues pulling on the leash or is going all over the place, having that loose collar is actually an issue to what we're trying to do. It's a drawback. So what we want to do when we're working with the dogs especially is make sure that we have the collar fitted to about a two finger space underneath the collar. So relatively snug, not tight, not choking our dog, uh, but a good snug fit. The reason, there's a couple reasons why this is a good idea. First off, our dog's not going to pull out of a snug, comfortable fitting, a snugly fit collar during a walk which is important if they get scared, if they get excited. So that's one of the big things. Uh, there's also the handling control and ease that it gives us. So if I have a big old loose collar, I have to overwork and compensate to make up for that slack that's in the collar and all that extra space. When I have the collar fit snug and nice, I can be very minute, very subtle on the commands that I'm giving through the leash, on the tensions, on the directions, on the things like that. Um, so it cuts down the work so much for us when we have a dog who's pulling or anything like that. So like I said, my recommendation with your collars is to make sure that they're about a two finger space, higher up on the neck, not way, lo way low down here. Um, also the higher that we have our collars, our working gear up on our dogs, the more control that it gives us, which is a reason why I'm not a big fan of harnesses, especially on big dogs. When we take our harnesses, we then take all the pulling, ah, ah, the pulling power of our dogs from, you know, the front here where they're more controllable. I can turn her back into me using this front angle a lot easier. We're putting it smack dab. Most harnesses fit here or here. So we're putting it in the thickest, firmest, strongest part of our dog, and we're controlling here. We've already got our front, uh, you know, wheel drive up in front, placing on the ground, doing it what it wants to do, and we're trying to maneuver a dog from the middle portion of their body. So one of the collar types that I use with different dogs, and that I recommend in various situations, is what Cookie here is wearing to model is a martingale. So you can see there's fabric up over on this side and comes around. And then on this particular one, there's a loop of chain. And you can see that as I pull this, the loop of chain tightens. It's going behind her. Okay. So this tightens as I apply pressure. Well, first and foremost, I will get into the tightness setting on these. So especially again, just like on a regular collar, when we are walking our dog or working with our dog, we want a snug two finger space. Even with the martingale, with it tightening up, we still want to have it sitting a little bit snug in the beginning. Um, because the main thing is to get the little bit of this correction noise, this attention getting noise, and the tightening up that goes with it. Okay, good girl cookie. Good. So now what goes on, we'll come over here and get cookies leash set. Good girl. Good girl. 
We come in here, and we clip her, and my leash goes there. All right, so now if our dog starts to pull, ah, uh ah, -uh. good girl. So she got out of her sit without being asked, a little correction, and that leash tension, and boom, our girl goes right back into a sit, okay? So I'm going to release her, cookie, okay, break, and then a little leash tension, boom, good girl. And that butt immediately goes into a sit. That tension here on the leash, or on the collar, and that little clinking noise, that together helps get their attention, get them nicely into whatever we're trying to do with them. Now the other place where the martingale comes in handy if we're walking with a dog who pulls every time they pull on the leash, this is going to tighten up, give them a little bit of correction as it slows them down. Um, and then the other thing where I recommend this um, is when we have dogs, huskies are a notorious breed who tend to back out of their collar when they don't like something. Um, and dogs that have an odd wedge-shaped head, well, not odd, but, uh, you know, a head shape where the head is about the same size as the neck. So there's, there's less ability for the collar to stop. So that's one area where the martingales are great, because if you have a dog who is going to pull out of the leash, the more they pull back on the leash, the more snug this is going to get. So there is there is no way that they're going to be able to pull out of that martingale. Now, martingales are available in, like I said, the chain loops here or the fabric loops. So that's the martingale. Thank you, Cookie, for being such a good demonstrator. <laughs> All right, thank you.